Hey, Denon High School, this is Mr. Aiden, and we are in acids and bases, and let's get to it. Um, there are different theories on acids and bases, and the first one is Arrhenius. Arrhenius came up with a, a theory that said acids have a lot of H+, plus or dissociate or split up into a lot of H+, plus, and bases, of course, split up into a lot of hydroxide, or OH-. And this is somewhat true, except we don't see this in a lot of our weak acids and weak bases. So Bronsted Lowry came along and said that that acids are actually proton donors. They're actually H plus givers. They, they give away H plus because acids, of course, have a lot of H plus, or protons. And well, bases then, of course, are proton acceptors. They accept the H plus. And we'll be able to see this in uh, our equations in just a second. But strong acids, you have to know your six strong acids. And this is term in terms of Arrhenius. Okay? Of course, HCl, HBr, HI, they're all um, strong acids, you can see HF is not a strong acid. And we also have nitric acid, that's HNO3, sulfuric acid, that's H2SO4, and perchloric acid, that's HClO4. Those are strong acids, and what do strong acids do? They dissociate or ionize 100%. We also have a bunch of strong bases. Anything in group 1 is going to be a strong base. That's so lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, rubidium hydroxide, cesium hydroxide. And most of my group 2s are going to be hydroxides. So um, it will be strong bases. Strontium hydroxide, barium hydroxide. Now once we get up to calcium and magnesium hydroxide, it starts to, to become kind of strong, kind of weak. Okay, And we'll see that as we go along. But you have to know most group 1 and group 2 hydroxides are going to be strong bases. This is some information about strong stuff you have to know. Is The first thing is that it dissociates 100%. So a strong acid or a strong base splits up, it ionizes 100%. And if it ionizes 100%, then guys, they're strong electrolytes. They have positives and negatives that are free to roam around. They have H plus and Cl minus if we're talking about hydrochloric acid, and therefore it conducts electricity. We call that a strong electrolyte. And guys, something to keep in mind is use your pH equations immediately with strong acids and strong bases. Use them immediately. You don't have to do any equilibrium stuff. You just use them immediately. And something to keep in mind about strong acids spe specifically is the greater number of oxygens means the stronger the acid. So we have, if we have HClO4, that's going to be a strong acid. HClO3 will be a weak acid. All right. Um, these are some equations that you might want to keep in mind. Is is that you might get a problem that says show that HF has a pH below seven. And what do we know? A pH below seven means is that it means it is an acid. And so how do we show HF is an acid? Well, we add it with water. Okay. And HF will give away H plus because it's a proton donor. And that gives you H3O plus, and that gives you, of course, F minus. Hopefully not your grade. Okay, you can see right here on the right-hand side, um, actually on the left-hand side, HF is a weak acid here, a weak acid there, whereas water is acting like a base here. It's acting like a base. But the H3O plus, you can see on the other side, H3O plus is what we call my conjugate acid. And why is it my conjugate acid is it has a lot of H plus in it, okay? Whereas the F minus would be what's called my conjugate base, my conjugate base. And so the F minus would be a little bit basic, okay? Let, let me show you another equation uh, in that it says show that NH3 ammonia has a pH above 7. What does pH above 7 mean? It means we have a base, okay? So ammonia here is a base, and it is always a base. And we're going to combine that with water. This is the best way to show that you have an acid or a base. And here, ammonia is my base. Water is my acid here. And what do acids give away? They give away H+. And if they give away H+, we get NH4+, and we get hydroxide, OH-. And you can see on the right-hand side, the NH4+, the ammonium, would be my conjugate acid, and why is it a conjugate acid? Is it has a lot of H+, plus. it could literally give away H+, plus again, whereas the hydroxide would be what's called my conjugate base, my conjugate base. Now something to just keep in mind is this, if you want to know whether a salt is a strong, or a salt is acid or base, is acidic or basic, all you have to look is at the conjugate. If we have a, a salt like sodium fluoride, since fluoride is a conjugate base, this would be a basic salt.
It would be an overall basic salt if you dissolved it in water. If you look at something like ammonium chloride, NH4Cl, okay, ammonium is a conjugate acid of ammonia, so this would be acidic if you dissolved it in water. Okay? But something like NaCl doesn't have any conjugate of a weak acid or weak base. It actually comes from a strong acid and strong base, so NaCl would be neutral. And you can see how the Na of NaOH and the Cl of HCl, that would be a neutral salt. So if you have a, an acid or a basic salt, just look at, for your conjugate, okay? And you'll be able to see whether you have um, an acid or base, all right? Um, let's go to our pH calculations, our equations for pH. Remember I said if you have a strong acid or strong base, use your equations immediately. And these are our equations. pH and pOH equals 14. Okay, they have to add up the 14. We know H plus times OH minus, the concentrations of H plus times the concentration of OH minus always equals 1e to the negative 14, or 1 times 10 to the negative 14. We have an equation of for pH to find the pH is pH equals negative log of the H plus. And maybe something you want to write down is if you have been given the pH, the H plus will be 10 to the negative pH. And we'll go over this more in class uh, as we go along. If the pH equals negative log of the H plus, then the pOH equals negative log of OH minus, and therefore the OH minus is equal to 10 to the negative pOH. Let, let me give you an example, and you might want to break out a calculator when I do these examples so you can take a look. Here I have a strong acid. I have HNO3. So what can I use right away? I can use my pH calculations. They've, been, they've given me, because I know a strong acid dissociates completely, this is really the concentration 0.0015 molar is the concentration of H plus. So if I want to know the pH, I can use pH equals negative log of the H plus. And if you have a calculator that's nice that I told you to buy, like that little TI calculator, you can plug it right in your calculator. You just plug in negative, you push the log button, and you put in 0.0015 molar. And it will kick out your pH, and your pH will end up being 2.82. You always want to run around your pH pH is the two decimal places, no matter what, because all of our pH meters give us to us that way. Let me show you what happens when we have a strong base. So this is really hydroxide right here, okay? So we have 2.50 grams. What do I do with grams? I always divide by my molar mass, and the molar mass of NaOH is 40 grams per mole. And that gives me 0 0.0625 moles, and that is of my sodium hydroxide, or I could say that is my hydroxide, because I know when I put it in water, it's going to dissociate completely. I'm going to take my moles and divide by my liters, my 0.5 liters, and that will give me my concentration. My concentration will be 0.125 molar, and that is hydroxide. That's my concentration of hydroxide. So because it's an OH minus, I can't find my pH. I got to first find my pOH, because pOH equals negative log of the OH minus concentration. Negative log of, and what goes in the brackets always is molarity, OK? And I go negative log of that. And I end up getting, if I do that, is 0 0.90 is my pOH. So what do I know is my pH plus my pOH equals 14. So if my pOH is 0.9, what's my pH? 13.10, because they have to add up to 14. And you can see, sodium hydroxide is a base. That pH is really high. It's probably going to be correct. Okay. Um, let's continue on. We also do these things called titrations with acids and bases. And what a titration is, is if you have an analyte, which is down below, and you do not know his molarity, but you know the volume that you put in there. You know the volume specifically that you put in there. We can titrate it with something. Okay, we're going to put something in this thing called a burette up top. Okay, and a burette, we put a titrant in there. And let's say we have we have an acid down bottom. We're going to put a base in our burette. And guys, before I want to put before I want to do any titration, you want to rinse out your burette first with your base. Always rinse it out. That way you don't have uh, you have the correct concentration. Now you're going to put something that you know the molarity of this base, okay? And you'll be able to figure out how much volume you put in to come to what's called the equivalence point. And so you end up using M1V1 
equals M2V2 to find the other molarity. And just keep in mind, put your acid on one side, put your base on the other, and you can find out any, what we call the equivalence point. And what the equivalence point is, what the equivalence point is, is when the moles are equal. When the moles of your acid and the moles of your base, the M1V1 is equal to the M2V2. Okay, and we have four different graphs you need to know. The first one is a strong acid that's titrated with a strong base. So we're going to titrate it with a strong base. And we're going to start off with a strong acid in there, so it starts off with a really, really low pH. And what happens is, as I put in some hydroxide, it goes, 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 and skyrockets all the way up. Okay, and right in between is called my equivalence point. That's when my moles of my acid and my moles of my base are equal. The moles of my acid and the moles of my base are equal. And if you're titrating a strong acid with a strong base, the equivalence point will be right at pH of 7. You're neutralized. And this is my H plus plus my OH minus gives me my water. That is that equation right there. What does a graph look like if I have a weak acid titrated with a strong base? So we're still going to put in a strong base here, but we're going to start with a weak acid, which means a weak acid is going to start a little bit higher of a pH, okay? And what's going to happen is we'll come along here, and then it'll skyrocket up, same thing, but you can see my equivalence point, my equivalence point is above 7, okay? Why? Because I'm titrating a weak acid, that's something like HA, a weak acid, with a strong base, OH minus, and so he gives away the H plus, and I get H2O plus the A minus, and you can see that's a conjugate base, so I end up with a basic solution at the equivalence point, okay? And so this is where I can use my M1V1 equals M2V2, and this right here, which is called halfway to the equivalence point, halfway to the equivalence point, so if my equivalence point's at 10 mils, this would be at 5 mils, halfway to the equivalence point, the pH is equal to the pKa. That won't make any sense right now, but when we get into equilibrium, that will make sense. Okay? What happens if we have a titration curve of a weak base titrated with a strong acid? So we're going to put in a strong acid here, but we're going to start off with a weak base. So it starts off higher. Okay? And so what happens is it comes along and shoots down like this, and you can see the equivalence point. Where's the equivalence point? It's below 7. Why is it below 7? Because I'm titrating again with a weak base with a strong acid. And our last titration curve looks like when we have a polyprotic acid. That's where we have more than one proton. And so what's going to happen in a polyprotic acid is it's going to look like this. It's going to come up. It's going to come up again. Okay. And so we, have, we will have two equivalence points. Why will there be two equivalence points? Because that's when you give away the first H+, plus, that's where you give away the second H+, plus for the H2CO3. I hope this uh, helped, guys, and I will see you in class for acids and bases after the break. Thanks.